All right, so we're going to take a look at mixture word problems. Here we're looking at word problems where items are mixed together, and I'm going to show you how to solve those type of problems. To solve this type of problems, we need to first explain what mixtures are. Then we're going to see the simplest steps that we need to follow to solve mixture word problems. And then we're going to do a few of them together. What is a mixture? A mixture is a substance that is made after mixing other substances together. A simple example that we can use to explain mixtures is water and salt mixed together to form salty water. Some call it seawater. But the important thing to remember about mixtures is that the quantity of the mixture is usually more than the individual substances mixed together. This concept is going to be very important as we walk through mixture word problems. Let me repeat that again. The quantity of the mixture is usually more than the individual substances mixed together. How are we going to go about solving word problems? The mixture word problems. We're going to first identify the known quantities, identify any unknown quantities. We'll create a table. The table makes it easier for you to manage what you're trying to mix and, and also makes it easier for you to see the equations that you need to create from the word problem. And then after that, we're going to create equations based on the information from this table. So you can see the value of creating that table. It allows you to see all the uh, variables and the constants that you need in creating your equation. Let's go ahead and look at this example together and see how we can apply all these steps in solving mixture word problems. So we have two meter cube of soil containing 35% sand was mixed with, was mixed into six cubic meters of soil containing 15% sand. What is the sand content of the mixture? So what we're going to do here is in our table, there are a few things I like to place in the table. So we're going to look for the first one is, we can, we can call this substance one or solution one, whichever one you want to prefer, whichever one you prefer. So let's go ahead and say solution one. Let's call this one solution two. And then we're going to call this mixture. Okay, and then for this uh, cell here, we're going to have here concentration. And then here you can also use CONC as a short form. Concentration here, and then we're going to use amount here. And then here we're just going to use the word multiply, just so you know exactly what you're going to do with each of these columns. So the concentration for the first one is 35%. In order for you to solve mixture word problems, you need to remember how to convert from percent to decimal. So we're going to just have it here as 0 0.35. And then we have the amount here is going to be 2. And then for solution 2, we have 15% sand. So this is 0 0.15 and then the amount here is 6. So now what we're going to do to each of these is we're going to simply multiply. So we have 0 0.7. Here we have 0 0.9. And now what is our mixture going to be? We need to figure out the amount of sand, the concentration of sand that is in the mixture. So here we're going to remember that this the concentration of sand in the mixture is unknown. I'm going to replace that with an X. The amount here, remember that when you're combining, as I said earlier, when you're combining them together, the mixture is going to be greater than each of the amount of the solution. So the amount of the mixture is going to be the sum of each of these solutions. So this is going to be 2 plus 6, which is equal to 8. 
and then we're going to multiply this we're going to add this together as well because we added here this is going to give us 1.6 so now what we're going to have is that remember the what we did for each of these columns for solution one and solution two we multiply the concentration by the amount to get this value here the multiply you can call this total as well if you want but i just put this here so you can know that we're doing a multiplication to get this value so we're simply going to have x multiplied by 8 equal to 1.6 now we're going to divide both sides by 8 and you're going to get x is equal to 0 0.2 and we're going to convert that back to percent. So 0 0.2 multiplied by 100, which is 20%. So the mixture is going to have 20% sand. We're going to do a few more examples just so you get more familiar with how to work through this type of problems. The second one, we have 9 pounds of mixed nuts containing 55% peanuts were mixed with 6 pounds of another kind of mixed nuts containing 40% peanuts. What percent of the new mixture is peanuts? So we're going to start with, let's call this substance one. And we're going to call this substance two. And this is going to be our mixture. And here we're going to have concentration. And in this case, concentration is going to be the uh, percent of, meat, of peanuts. And then here we're going to have amount or quantity. It depends on what you want to use. And then we're going to have a multiply. You could also say total here. It all, it all depends on your preference. So the concentration of substance 1 is going to be 0 0.55. And then we have how many pounds so this is going to be nine pounds so we have nine pounds in this first substance and then we're going to multiply them together we're going to get 4.95 now for substance two we have 40 percent peanuts so this is going to be 0 0.40 and then we have six pounds of that so we're going to multiply to get 2.40. And now let's deal with our mixtures. We're looking for the concentration. So that's what we need to find. So this is going to be X. And then our quantity here is going to be 9 plus 6, which is equal to 15. And then we're going to add the totals here as well, which should give you, let's go for that, 4.5. 90 plus sorry 4.95 4.95 plus 2.40 and then this is 5 3 so 7.35 7.35 so now what we're going to do here is we're going to just like we did for each of these columns on substances we're going to do the same for mixtures so we're going to have x multiplied by 15 equal to 7.35 and we divide both sides by 15 divide both sides by 15 so let's go ahead and divide 7.35 by 15 and i'm just going to ignore the decimal initially so this is going to be 4 4 multiplied by 15 we have 60 we have 135 and then we have 9 multiplied by 15 135 and now we're going to put our decimals so it's going to be 0 0.49 which is 0 0.49 so they're going to be 49 percent you're going to have 49 percent of the new mixture have peanuts so we're going to have 49 percent of peanuts in the mixture Let's go for one more example and see if this makes more sense. So we have 7 kilograms of soybean oil cost $4 per kilogram. And they are combined with 14 kilograms of canola oil, which costs $1 per kilogram. 
and we want to find the cost per kilogram of the mixture. Okay, so we're going to start again here. So we can go here and we can just say uh, soybean oil. That's pretty simple. Soybean oil here. And then over here we can have canola oil. And here we're going to have our mixture. So the first part here, we're going to look at weight. And we're going to look at price. You could also do price first. It doesn't matter. Weight, price. And then we're going to do our multiply here. Remember I told you earlier that this is also the same as total. So it depends on what you prefer using. So the weight here is going to be 7. And the cost is $4 per kilogram. So we're going to multiply here. We get 28 dollars here and then canola oil we have 14 kilograms and we have one dollar per kilogram so we're going to have here 14 dollars and now we want to find what are we looking for the cost per kilogram so this is going to be our x and this is we're going to add this together 7 plus 14 because if you mix 7 kilograms of something with 14 kilograms of another of another liquid you should get about 21 kilograms you're going to add them together so that's going to give you 21 and then your total here is going to be 42 so like what we did here is we're going to remember that we multiply the weight and the price to get the total so we're going to do the same here so it's 21 multiplied by x equal to 42 and so we're going to divide both sides by 21 and you're going to get x equal to 2. So for the new mixture, you're going to, it's going to be at a rate of $2 per kilogram. So that's how you do that. And then finally, we're going to solve one more example. So for her birthday party, Catherine mixed together three gallons of brand A fruit punch. So three gallons of brand A fruit punch and six gallons of brand B. Brand A contains 17% fruit juice. Brand B contains 26% fruit juice. What percent of the mixture is fruit juice? Okay, so let's start with brand A. This is brand A. This is brand B. And this is going to be our mixture. So here we're looking for concentration, which is going to be fruit juice, and this is going to be amount, and then this is going to be our total, or we can put here multiply. So brand A, the concentration of brand A is 17%, which is 0 0.17, and how much do we have of brand A is going to be 3 gallons. So we're going to multiply this together. You're going to get 0 0.51. What about brand B? Brand B is 26%. So 0 0.26. And then we have 6 gallons of those. Let's go ahead and add this together. You have, rather multiply together. You have 1.56. So we want to find the percent of mixture, which is our concentration, which is X. And the amount here is going to be 9. And then we're going to add this together, which is going to be 1.56 plus 0 0.51. So this is 7, 0. So 2.07. 2.07. Now we're going to multiply the concentration and amount to get the mixture. So 9, and then we have x equal to 2.07 now let's go ahead and divide both sides by 9 divide by 9 so 2.07 divide by 9 we're going to ignore the decimal so we have 2 here this is going to give us 18 subtract we have 27 3 27 and so we're going to just have our 0 0.23 which is 0. 0 0.23 so the mixture is going to have 23 percent fruit juice 
So this is the best method. I would say it's the easiest method you can use when you're solving when you're solving mixture word problems. You can see that when you create the tables, it's easier to see how your equations can be created.